Keep keeping. Uh, we kind of laugh when we say keeping. We don't really keep the bees. They're wild animals. When they want to leave, guess what they do? They leave. So here's some questions that you need to ask yourself when you're starting beekeeping. First of all, uh, what kind of personal protection equipment do you need? You want to protect your body, right? What kind of equipment do you need? Where do you get your bees from? And of course, now what? What do you do after that point? So personal protection equipment is PPE. That would be bee suits, veils, and gloves. This is our current favorite hat. And we've had other ones. And it goes over your head and then this straps under your arms and comes back around. You need a hive, a smoker. You've probably seen one of those on TV. I guess, do you know why we smoke the hive? Put it asleep. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> oh, look, it smells. Can you smell it? So what you're trying to do is kind of mimicking a forest fire. Because when there's a forest fire, the bees are going to think emergency. Let's get into our hive and get as much honey as we can. You can like pick up the pine straw. If there's pine trees around your hive, something that's familiar to them. You can buy little pellets and things. Sometimes we use the chips we use in our bedding for our chickens. A hive tool, they're different sizes. Uh, they help you to lift the hive, the frame up out. You can scrape things. A bee brush, that's what this is. It's very soft. So when you're cleaning, sometimes you get a frame and you need to brush them off. Or if you are um, maybe removing a swarm and you need to brush them out of a, off a limb or something. Because a regular brush, the bristles would be too hard. This is a queen clip. And if we're doing a removal, the bees want to stay with their queen. I mean, she's their lifeline. So if we find her, we clip her in here and we use rubber bands to rubber band her to a frame. And we rubber band her in and my job's pretty much done because I can just leave that box there and they're going to start marching in there to go to their queen. Now we do, like I said, try to mimic her by putting the uh, lemon grass. That's what the queen's pheromones smell like. Before we're doing a removal, we'll put that in the box, sometimes on Q-tips, so it's not so overpowering and I can remove it if I need to. That way the bees are like, oh, she's already in there, we need to go in there. And it tricks them. The Langstroth hive is this kind, that's a box. That's probably the most popular. And a nucleus, a nuke is a little box and that's what you usually buy your bees from, from a beekeeper. So this is my son helping my husband build uh, beekeeping boxes. So where do you get bees from? Most of our bees from doing removals. We bought two hives. Um, and you can also order bees online through catalog. Find a mentor, take a class, join a club. Uh, I started, I think in 2017, at Shangri-La. They were having a beekeeping class and they were gonna talk about how you can build your own hive. I was so excited, I was bringing those plants home. Guess what my husband was doing for me that weekend, you know. I always find a good more jobs to do. And then that class went into another class at Shangri-La that he came to with me. And those same beekeepers maintained the bees at Shangri-La. And that led into um, taking a formal class from that family, the Muldrows, and they had beginning beekeeping and it was a year long class. And that was very appealing to me because the things you learn about in the spring and you do with your hive in the spring is not the same things you need to do in the fall. So we had one class a month and one bee yard day a month. So we learned in the classroom, this is my binder. We learned in the classroom and then we 
went out in the bee yard and put all of that information into hands on. We've had up to 12 hives and that was a little too much for the two of us to maintain. You really should check your hives like every three to five weeks. This particular spot on our fence post, when bees swarm, they tend to go to the same spot. And this swarm trap was out before the hurricanes. I was passing by on my golf cart and I came up behind it and I said, I need to write that down, that I need to come out here, clean this out, bait it with some oil, and get that ready because they're going to start swarming. I drove up a few more steps and turned around and this is what was there. They had already moved in. So um, at this point, this is uh, called bearding. Isn't that what it looks like? They do that because it's hot and they're trying to cool off. They're out on the front porch. And sometimes they do that because there's not enough room. So you need to be ready when this is happening that you might need to move some people, move them to a bigger box, or you need to watch and, and be ready. They will actually build bridges on each other. And um, they're fanning to cool off. This is a piece of comb that they're building on their own. There was no foundation. So as you can imagine, since we talked about wax, these are my bees, that took a lot of work. What we hope to do is give them a little head start. So this is what we use, and it's wax. You can feel it, so that they have a base to start from, okay? Um, they also have something called Plastacell, and there's all types of equipment. Some people have entire plastic hives is plastic so it's the same thing they can build off of it it does give them a head start but it's plastic if you're wondering why i have this is because i bought a box of bees from someone and they used that this is for a smaller box it's also plastic this is a recent picture i was circling the babies you can see them so I knew my queen was in there. That was one of them emerging, trying to come out. This was the first removal we did. And that little hole right there, compared to the size of the bee, is where the bees were going in and out. And doesn't take much for them to go in and out. So this is after we cut out the wall. The beehive was way up in there. Uh, this is, we cut out some of that wax and we put it on a frame because they worked hard on that, and that's less wax they have to make. So we brought that with them so that uh, they would have that already. This is the queen, can you see her? She's right here. See how her abdomen is longer? These are the bees, our queen is in there, so they're marching in, and they literally form a line and march in the box. It's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, this is what I was telling you when I put the uh, smell on the Q-tip and how clean they like their beehive. This is them removing the Q-tip that I left in there because that's not supposed to be. So they work very, very hard and I will put a Q-tip in there and catch a hive and the next day come back and the Q-tip's on the ground. Like within 24 hours, they've gotten rid of that thing. This is one of the rubber bands. If you saw like how we rubber banded the uh, wax in or the queen in, they don't like that either. They take that out. Um, they can't bite, they lick it until it snaps. This is what it looks like. They lick the rubber band until, um, until it has a weak point and snap. Sometimes uh, if you have a weak hive and it's coming on winter, and they don't have enough food to make it through the winter, you have to feed your bees. And you feed them a water sugar solution, very strong sugar, strong on the sugar. And uh, that's what we did here. And they are just, I mean, 24 hours, that's gone. They just drink it up. This is a recent swarm that we had in our pear tree. And that's us putting everything in the box. There's the queen. We found her sugar ants. And you may not think about them, but they will get to your hives. And if you have a weak hive, they can take it over. That's the sugar ants. We had the same problem at my beekeeping class in our bee yard. This is what our hives look like. And there's nothing you can do. That's just 
There's no coming back from that. We do, um, I usually keep uh, cinnamon, ground cinnamon in my box. If I see ants around, I sprinkle that around because it'll burn their little legs when they're trying to climb up and they climb through the, the cinnamon. This is a windbreak we made one rough winter because all of our, we didn't really think about place, but all of our beehives were facing, the opening was facing north and the bad weather was coming. I'm like, poor baby. So we kind of built a little makeshift wall to at least try to stop that wind. And that's what we got. So we were glad they at least had some, some break there. So this is how they make honey. The worker bee goes and collects some nectar. The nectar is brought to the hive in their honey stomach. So they swallow it, it's in their belly. They go back to the hive, they exchange that by regurgitation with another bee. That bee gets it into um, a cell. The nectar is very high in water content and honey is not. So they have to wait until that water evaporates out, most of it, before they cap it off. And then that's when we consume it. You don't consume it, it'll be more of a nectar, more of like water consistency than honey consistency. So honey can come in all different colors and it depends one on the flowers that the um, bees have visited and also can sometimes depend on the time of the year that the honey's pulled. A lot of times honey's pulled in the summer, like in July, but if you wait till after the October flow, um, which is a goldenrod flow, that's a darker honey. I'm gonna show you a picture of a removal we did and that honey was in that location for years and see how dark it is compared to, this one's kind of dark too, but not this, this dark. This down here is where it's starting to crystallize. That's where uh, this honey is from. We got four gallons of honey out of there. And when we do that, we like don't sell honey that's from a removal because that's not our bees. So we would label that as our honey. Go, we got a call for this outdoor hive and an old tractor tire. It was so pretty, I almost hated to take it. But um, occasionally you'll see an outdoor hive that's not inside something. 